So, Sunday, Chelsea versus Arsenal. London derby. I cannot wait. I really, really can't. And in the build-up for this particular game, I thought I'd ask a few questions to see how the Gooners are thinking and faring up over their start to the season and how they're looking forward to this particular game, where it's going to go. And I thought I'd ask my old pal, Kenny Ken, He's well known on this particular channel. He's been on it many, many times before. He does his chronicles. He's on Jess's channel, the Gunners channel, and obviously formerly of AFTV. Kenny, I want to ask you some questions and let's see what the opposition fans have got to say about the game this weekend. So, Kenny, obviously, I know you're going to be there on Sunday. It'd be great to see you, my friend. Um, always look forward to this particular game. If anything, mate, to bump into you. And uh, as we all know, our great friend Claude, who would have been 60 um, just a few weeks back. God rest his soul. But um, let's talk about this particular game then, mate. It's very intriguing. As we all know, Arsenal are going really well right now. Um, if you win on Sunday, you go 13 points clear of us. And uh, if we win, it goes down to seven. So it's a must win for us, my friend. And um, this particular game, normally uh, you are the underdogs. And yet I think it's pretty even on this particular one. If anything, you're probably the favourites because of your form. And uh, what a magnificent start you've had to the season so far. Ours has been a little bit indifferent, but we've had a managerial change, as you know. So my first question then, Kenny, is this. Um, first and foremost, how do you feel your season's gone so far? And have you changed your opinion on Mikel Arteta, bearing in mind that um, you've not exactly been a fan? Hello Tony, thank you for asking me to do a video on the eve of our, what I feel is one of our biggest games in the season calendar, Chelsea versus Arsenal, and I will be attending. But in terms of how I think Arsenal season has gone so far, I must say that Arsenal fans, myself including, and also the Rat Army, which includes myself, Jez, and Lee Gunner, we are extremely um, overall pleased with our season. You know, we've been very um, pleased with the form of um, Granit Xhaka, which is quite remarkable. Thomas Partey has been fantastic for us. And overall, you know, Martinelli has been a find. And, you know, we've the way we've played this season is nothing short of exemplary in terms of, like, the fact that we we won a majority of our games. The only, time, the only um, two games we dropped points was Man United, were a game which I feel we were very good in terms of, like... Um, I felt that we dominated the game for most parts, but the key moments, Man United won the game and won the game quite convincingly and deserved it to a extent because they were more clinical than us. In terms of Southampton, that was disappointing and quite frustrating. I think since our win against Liverpool, which was a very emotional game, I felt that um, our form has taken a slight dip. You know, uh, Some of the games in the Europa League have been a bit disappointing. Um, Bodo Glimp away wasn't great. PSV was a bit of a disaster. Yesterday against um, Zurich again, we weren't particularly that great. And Leeds, you know, we rode our luck. And Southampton, um, we just ran out of steam. So we've got we've got a bit of a slight dip in form. And, you know, not the Forest was a welcome um, game for us because, uh, let's say, at the moment, I don't think they were a premiership stand and we took advantage. In terms of my feeling of Miss Arteta, again, we can't just wipe out... Um, the first um, few years of his uh, management, where he's two eighth place finishes, albeit winning the FA Cup and um, miss out in Champions League. For me, he's he's in the right lines, but in terms of us changing our mind, I think he's going to take a bit more than um, you know the first um, eleven games of the season or twelve games, let's say, for us to change our minds. We're going to have to uh, have a review, um, you know, as it goes along, because you know, still I still need a bit convincing, but. So far this season, he's been fantastic, and um, I'm very um, happy for him. 
and I'm happy with the way his team's playing overall, though there's been a slight, you know, uh, dip in form. So my second question then, Kenny, where do you see the game won and lost? We know it's a London derby. We know the atmosphere is going to be electric last season, as you know. It weren't so great, although you were very, very jubilant. You have won in the last two occasions at Stamford Bridge and you beat us in the um, pre-season friendly. How do you see this particular game going, Kenny? Um, and who do you think are the danger men in this particular game? And also, what do you think about Chelsea's form this season? And in particular, the fact that we got rid of Thomas Tuchel, our new owners, and where we're going with it all. And of course, what do you think of Graham Potter? Well, I feel that the game is going to be a, a very tight game, as a lot of our games um, with Chelsea have been of late. I will say that um, in terms of like, the areas where I think it's be won. I think where Chelsea have managed to, um, you know, have the sort of um, India rubber sign over us has <clears throat> been their exemplary midfield over the years, where, you know, their players like Essien, um, Kante uh, most recently, and also players players like you know, Kovacic, where, they, where they've been um, very like, strong in the middle of the engine room. And I think over the years, um, that is where we've lost the games. Obviously, I, I, you, can't, you can't forget them. Um, Macalele, and obviously the danger man for Chelsea was always someone like Dier Dropper. In terms of this game, this is an area that I think Chelsea will struggle because they have lost uh, key players out of their engine room. One of the best players in the, in world football, although he's probably in a bit of decline, is um, Kante. And um, he, he's a massive, massive loss for Chelsea. Now, we're hearing that Kovacic is uh, injured as well. And also in terms of like, the way Chelsea can play with win-backs, They've lost down um, Chilwell and um, Rhys James. So there are areas where I think Arsenal can exploit, especially in the midfield and also preferably um, down the wings. In terms of the goalkeeping situation with Chelsea, you know, if you asked me a year ago, I would have said Mendy's one of the best goalkeepers in the country, but obviously he's lost a bit of form and confidence. And Alisa Barea has come in and um, played a blinder, but he's now injured. So that's an area. In terms of Arsenal, we're very strong in the midfield. Um, engine room in terms of um, Thomas Partey is probably a, is definitely our best player Jarek Jack is in fantastic form and also you know we can pick from Odegaard and um, um, Silva so those are you know sorry um, Vieira so those are areas which um, Arsenal can um, attack and I think that's where Arsenal will be very strong also we've got Jesus we've got the former Saka so these are these are the massive danger men for um, Arsenal in terms of um um, Chelsea season so far. Well, for me, um, it's been kind of a, a conundrum really because if you look at the situation, they sat Thomas for um, Tuchel for I believe non-football reasons. They've got Graham Potter in, and they've given him a lot of time, and he has got results. But in terms of where Chelsea are playing, I think they're a bit lopsided. Um, I think he's trying to keep a lot of players happy. You know, um, trying to keep um, Kukurea and um, Shaw and seeing that you know works up to a certain extent and they're just getting by results, they're not really playing the flow of football that um, that you you expect from a um, Chelsea. So in terms of um, um, where I think um, Tuchel was a massive loss, he's also won a Champions League in his first full season. In terms of Graham Potter, well this is where it's can swim for Potter because he's got it's the biggest job he's ever going to get and I think it's good for an English manager to get um, these kind of um, returns or in terms of um, gigs. But he really needs to learn, know his lineup, and he really needs to stick to probably one formation. I don't think it's going to benefit him or Chelsea if he keeps on changing formations, because that's something he did really well at Brighton. But it's, with Ch but it's Chelsea. I think players need to know what sort of formations they're doing, and they need to, you know, play that formation on a regular basis. If he wants to play a back three, then play play a back three more means. If you want to play four three three, then stick with that and get the players to accumulate to that. Because that will be his undoing, and because you know that they if things go wrong, players never take the blame. Would be the manager because he's confusing the players. So that's where Graham Potter probably will need to um, improve, and also you will need to get the best out of um, some players like Sterling and Bamia. Because I didn't mention him in terms of danger man, but Bamia, you know, they call it the over derby, but let's face it, you know, 
depends on what over you're going to see. But for me, those are the issues I see with Chelsea and the, the corrections that I think could be made for it would be the force that they've been for quite a few years. Third question, then Kenny. And I happen to know that Stamford Bridge is one of your most favourite stadiums. You do love to come to our side uh, of London. What's your most memorable moment? And what do you think is going to be the score come Sunday afternoon? And um, do you think that there'll be a red card? Because there always seems to be some kind of decision as such, which tends to go your way. But do you see that happening as well, my friend? Hello, Tony. You were 100% correct. I do love um, going to Stamford Bridge. It's a beautiful area of um, the capital that I love. I can actually, if I had the money, probably live around that area, obviously, and that's probably sacrilege being in North London, but it's, it's a lovely area. You know, I, I have great hospitality. Obviously, seeing yourself, um, Tony, it was a pleasure. Also, I've seen, um, you know, Francis Stanley and her family, Becky Collins as well. Great, a lot of time for her. I've got a lot of time for Kath as well. Beautiful people. And I'll be looking forward to seeing them on Saturday. And also, I've got some good friends, um, the Globby family as well. Love it a bit. It's Chelsea, so I always get a friendly welcome in there. In terms of the game, how do I think it's going to go? I am. It can go either way because of the way um, Arsenal um, are playing really good football. But the incentive from the last two seasons at the bridge, Arsenal have won. We won um, by a car, bit of a mistake um, at the back. And we... Um, capitalised through Smith Rowe and then I suppose last season it's probably one of the worst games I've seen in terms of defending so it's a, it's a game so I could really go 2-2 two -two and I'll probably be sitting on the fence in terms of Murray's at Stamford Bridge I have to say they've not been great in the last um, since Abramage has come to this um, ground the only time um, obviously we go back to Carlu we won 3-2 when we 2-0 down goals goals from um, Graham is so enough and goes from a flow and then Carly got the hat trick. So for me, that's probably one of my best ever memories. And I know it's probably a bad memory for Chelsea, especially the goal when he um, got when he um, rounded um, the hoy and put it in the top corner. That is always a great memory. But also, you know, Van Persie as well. Um, the hat trick, the 5 3, again, that was a game that was really um, topsy turvy in terms of poor defending. But I suppose we don't really get much from Stafford Bridge, although. Previous to Bramwich's um, arrival, we had a very good record at Chelsea home and away, but since then, Chelsea, I admittedly, and I hate to admit, they are London's top side, and that's not a, a point that Arsenal fans can argue with. In terms of, do I think there's going to be a red card? There does tend to be a red card because of the sort of the nature of the game, and I think both um, Chelsea and Arsenal will benefit from this. And let's not forget, Tony, you say Arsenal will probably benefit more from this as in terms of maybe um, the penalty with um, Aspilicueta uh, on um, Saka. But let's not forget the 2015 game in the season where after you won the league where there was a bit of kerfuffle where we are asked where two players sent off, Santiago Carfola and also uh, let's not forget uh, Gabriel and um, Diego Costa when Gabriel actually uh, was found to be um, innocent but the red card still stood so you benefited from um, a bit of skull double from Diego Costa, so it goes both ways in terms of like decisions. But I don't think, you know, I think Mike and Oliver is going to have much to do. But again, there's a lot in it. You know, Bamiang's going to be playing. Sterling's going to want to sort of um, get back in the form because he scored. Bamiang scored three and twelve for Chelsea, so there's going to be heat on it in terms of like, you know, the fact. And remember, Graham Potter's got a very good record against us as well, so. I'd be looking forward to it. I don't think Mark Oliver will have much to do, but you know, it's Tony, it's half and half. I think you're talking about the cup finals where you, know, <laughs> you had a couple of players sent off when you had, uh, you know, Kovacic and um, before that you had um, Victor Moses, obviously, and Andy Taylor was there. They did, Andy Taylor's a very good friend of Arsenal fans when it comes to cup finals against Chelsea. So, um, Andy Taylor might be referring to that um, on Sunday. I think it's going to be um, Oliver, I think. So, I don't think you should have any worries, Tony. And my final question for you, Kenny, is do you see Arsenal, A, winning the league? Um, is your glass half full or half empty? And do you see Arsenal finishing in the top four and qualifying for the Champions League? 
Do you see Chelsea finishing in the top four this particular season? And if you can, let me know what your one, two, three, four is. And finally, can England win the World Cup? Hello. Do I think Arsenal are going to win the league? Um, Arsenal got a very thin squad compared to actually our opponents this Sunday, Chelsea, where they, Chelsea still are able to make a squad that has players for every, um, two players for every position. In terms of Arsenal, one of the things Arsenal fans are concerned about is the fact that there's a gap of quality between um, our strikers and the, you know, the substitute striker. For example, um, a gap in quality between Jesus and Eddie Nketiah. Also, there's a gap in quality between um, Partey and Albert Sambi Lukonga. So those are sort of areas Arsenal will, will, could worry about, and that's one of the areas we need to bridge a gap. Um, also, I would like us to get... So in terms of um, if Arsenal buy well in January and buy the players that I think we need, um, maybe a forward and a midfielder, then I think Arsenal are good to go in terms of change the title. But realistically, you have to say that Man City are a, a machine. You know, they're amongst the best teams in Europe and the way they're playing, especially when they peak, you know, second half of the season, they're going to be very difficult to catch. And I think there's going to be key games in the new year um, which, between both sides, Arsenal and Man City, where we're going to be pl probably playing them twice within um, maybe a couple of weeks because of the the fact that our game against um, Man City was called off because of the inadvertently because of um, the sad pass of Her Majesty not going to affect in terms of the PSG game, sorry, PSV game in the Europa League. In terms of um, will Arsenal get top four? Will is that I think that Arsenal fans should need to look higher than the top four. We're in the top of the table and I think Arsenal should be chasing the, the title. So the top four is probably going to be, uh, how I say it, the bronze medal position for us where I think a lot of Arsenal fans would like to challenge the title but Will, I, will we get the top four? The way we go, I think it's a. Uh, you can never say anything in football's an inevitability, but you know we are in the what I call the driving seat for that those positions. In terms of can Chelsea go to the top, finish in the top four? Well, you never write of Chelsea. That's one of the things that a lot of um, football fans have done when um, Chelsea have replaced managers. You know they seem to act quickly if they're not happy with the performances, and you know let's not forget. Many a time when you really left Chelsea, when um, you know Scolari was sacked, you brought in Hiddick, you finished third, and you nearly got to the final of the Champions League, and you got Barcelona, and that's that's a concurrent thing with Chelsea for a long time. With the quality of Ch players Chelsea have, you can never ever rule them out at the top four race. You know they still got um, probably the Indian rubber side over a lot of sides, and you still will fancy Chelsea in a sort of a you know six points up because they're probably one of the best teams in um, Europe um, in terms of winning one-off games um, and getting their tactics right. Let's not forget the Champions League final when um, everyone had uh, Man City as um, probably the favourite. So right off Chelsea in peril. In terms of where I think um, the top the top four is going to um, finish, right, I'm going to get my crystal ball out. Even though I've written off, I haven't written off Chelsea, I'm going to say first, Man City. Second, Arsenal. Third. Man United. Fourth. Probably Chelsea. Can England win the World Cup? Absolutely not. I think if you look at the performances in the League of Nations, that's been an indicator, although it's probably not the being a borrower on the side, but the fact is, is that teams have worked at Southgate's tactics, particularly um, you know since their um, excellent runs in the World Cup and the uh, European Championships, but the common denominator of big uh, both um, tournaments where they failed at the last hurdle was the fact that one it was Southgate's tactics, but most importantly, I think when England come across a top top nation, I think England do go into their shell. You know they give away a lot of possession, they put a lot of men behind the ball. And they find it very difficult to change gears. You know, you can only talk about negativity after they went a goal up against Italy last year. And let's not forget they used the same kind of um, tactics against Croatia. And um, as soon as um, 
both teams equalised. I think England just had their backs to the wall. And obviously, uh, Man is a uh, winner in nature of time was was an example. And let's not forget the the England losing on penalties. But I think teams have probably worked England out. So I think the best thing we can hope for is the probably the quarter finals. But if you know if they play a top top side, then I think they'll flounder because tactically I think team, top top teams work them out. They work out the corner routines. Which England used to um, um, great um, potency in terms of like the um, World Cup, and also the fact that they used a pace on a counter attack with players like Saka and Sterling in the European Championships. Good teams work out team strengths and utilise it, and then give them massive tests. And I think England are not at that stage where they they have um, players who can. Um, you know, maybe a playmaker who can pass the ball and keep possession. So that's my stance on England's voyage in the World Cup. One final question for you, Kelly. As we know, a certain wrestler, Abamyang, will be playing most likely on Sunday. Are you worried? And uh, what do you think of his comments? I am a blue now and all that. And do you think he will get a good perception from your supporters? Because in the past, you haven't exactly given the likes of Ashley Cole or Cesc Fabregas. I could go on, Kenny, but you know what I'm saying. Do you think he will get a good reception from the Arsenal supporters that are there at Stamford Bridge? And are you worried that he may come back to haunt you? Oh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. First and foremost, he was a very, very good player of Arsenal, especially in the, from the... Um, the time we signed him up until the time I think um, Unai Emery left the football club, I thought Unai Emery got the best out of um, a barrier alongside his mate, um, Lacazette. Clearly played their best football. And obviously um, he was um, the catalyst for Arsenal to win the FA Cup during um, the lockdown season. In terms of um, um, what happened, obviously we know what happened um, and how he was publicly and um, firstly dismissed as a captain. This... Um, was uh, probably a, you know, like I said, um, f a consequence of um, missing sp the long North London derby because of um, lateness. Um, I have heard things about the, what um, what was the final straw. It wasn't exactly um, something to do with lateness, but it was something a bit more uh, personal. And I got this some good authority for people who um, um, were in the corridors of the football club, and a real reason why. And the final reason why Bamian was removed from the club. In terms of him getting a good re reception, I don't see any reason why not. He was a very good servant for the football club. And, you know, it, it's um, one of the situations where, you know, the manager feels that if there's um, someone who's going to change his authority or he feels he hasn't contr got control of his dressing room, then he has to win that battle. It doesn't matter how, how much you love the player, how much. You know, you may have um, doubts about the manager, but the manager has to win the battle, just like he won the battles with Guendouzi, he won the battle with um, Leno, and he won the battle with um, Mesut Ozil. So he has to win those battles, and that's our control of his dressing room. Will Arsenal fans give him a great reception? I think, oh, well, I like to think they would. You know, he didn't let us down for football reason. He wasn't um, sort of um, disloyal to the club. He just, you know, fell out with his manager, and um, the manager felt that he... He wasn't a good influence in the dressing room, so I think under no circumstances he, would he get a bad reception. He certainly won't get it from me. You know, there's still a lot of Arsenal fans who were greatly disappointed when he was forced out of the club and felt that um, it was a wrong decision, especially when we were struggling for goals, to get rid of what a lot of Arsenal fans considered to be an elite striker. What's different about Bamiang and Ashley Cole is that Ashley Cole um, pushed through the move. We all know that what happened is same with doing David Dean and being reported for um, um, for poaching from Chelsea when they were having dinner with Pinnies um, Sahivi. And so and Ashley Cole obviously um, consulted a Chelsea man. So Arsenal fans are always going to be um, giving the bird. In terms of Fresh Fabregas, well, the thing with Seth Fabregas, in my opinion, the truth and self um, Seth Fabregas are in two different countries. If you want me to be um, Pacific or use um, an analogy, Cesc Fabregas is in Belfast and the truth is in um, Dublin somewhere. So, you know, it's a difference between two countries, the Republic of Ireland and um, 
Belfast, sorry, Norman on Destiny and Energies or something, because the way Seth Rabbit and Cohen talks about how he loves a football club, and he probably does in his own way, and how, you know, he he, won't, he wanted to come to Arsenal, but no one at the club and thought, felt that he it was the right decision to bring him back. I find that quite laughable because, you know, the truth is, is that Seth Fabregas received an approach from Jose Mourinho when whilst he was at Barcelona, and Seth Fabregas's choice was always going to be come to Chelsea. So I feel Arsenal fans need to um, calm themselves, or as, as the Irish say, relax themselves, and stop, you know, seeing them. Um, Seth Fabregas in the light that he likes to paint himself. You know, he made a very good decision footballing-wise to go to Chelsea. We were not in a position, and still not in a position, to change the title. Maybe until maybe this season, maybe a difference. So he's gone there and he's won two titles. Good luck to him. You can't begrudge that. He's won the FA Cup. You know, he wasn't exactly having a trophy ladder career at Arsenal. He only won one FA Cup. So don't blame him. But please tell the truth, um, Francesc. Just say, the tr say it like it is that you had a repose to Chelsea and you wanted to work with Judge Mourinho and you wanted to win trophies to say that. You know, no one's gonna hold, hold that against you. In terms of like Arsenal fans um, fearing about me to come and bite us on the back of the Arsenal course we fear that. He's gonna be up for this game. You know? Whether he wants to be at Chelsea or not, I, I have no idea. But the fact is is that he's an employee of Chelsea. There's a game into the lights, the video itself, why not? Why not? He plays for Chelsea. He's a Chelsea employee. He doesn't play for us anymore. So why should he be disloyal to the club that employs him? You know? The fact is, is that talking is all one thing. But walk, walk the walk is what's going to need to happen. And if he walks the walk and plays the kind of football that he's playing at um, Dortmund, Barcelona for a while, and the, and the football that he played for us for a majority of the time at the football club, then of course Arsenal fans will be very, very worried. But at the end of the day, it's not just about Oba, it's about Chelsea. Chelsea's always been kind of um, a difficult place for us to go to. It's been a massive, massive game because, as I said, Chelsea took our, took our um, title as um, the top club in London. So I can't complain about um, any treatment um, Pierre Emmerich Rebellion is going to get, but I think he's going to get a fantastic reception. Well, thank you very much indeed, Kenny. I cannot wait to see you on Sunday. It's been a long time, mate. And um, it's just great to catch up, you know what I mean? Um, rivalry aside, uh, it's always fun. Uh, I remember in particular, I'm sure you do too, that moment outside the Emirates, a few seasons back now as it goes. And um, there I was in my Chelsea blue. There you was in your red Arsenal home shirt racing across the concourse outside the away end, um, as I say, at the Emirates. And the police was like, well, what's going on here? So we were going towards each other. Uh, security as well, like, kind of stepped towards us. And there we were, both of us hugging each other. And it was like, what's going on here? <laughs> but there you go, mate. It's, um, it's all about friendship. And uh, we saw the funny side of that one, didn't we, mate? But yeah, it'd be great to see you, my friends. Thank you ever so much for, um, uh, you know, doing taking the time out to do this. It's much appreciated. And uh, may the best side win. And of course, you know what I'm going to say, buddy. London is blue. <laughs> see you Sunday, my friend. Yes, Tony, it'd be, fuck. It'd be brilliant to see you, mate. I'm really looking forward to it. As you know, it's my favourite away go. And it's good to see yourself... Uh, you know, um, Francis, Becky, and you know, all these other, all the other Chelsea people. So it'd be great to see you. Um, I'm looking forward to it. But obviously, the results just as important. So I see you. Um, thing. I do remember what um, the game six years ago at the Emirates Stadium when um, the coppers just couldn't get it. And one um, lovely Arsenal fan went up to me and he went, I "Can't believe what I'm seeing. That's just brilliant. Two fans from two different clubs with their arms around each other. That's how football should always be. And they're right. Football's up." It's all be about mateship. It doesn't matter who you support. Mateship comes before that. So I'll see you soon.